Lesson 69 in GDP has several objectives and one of them in the Word Manual lesson is to learn how to use the Find and Replace feature. Now this may be something you're familiar with, but this lesson is important not particularly for the document we'll be doing, but to show you just how far you can go with it to find formatting, trailing spaces, and extra spaces in your document. So please do take a look at that in Lesson 69. It is 69H word processing, find, and replace. That is in your word manual, Lesson 69. When you're ready to do Correspondence 6975, the things that this document is going to focus on are proofreader's marks, memo format, as well as including another table in a memo or a report. So let's begin with Correspondence 6975. Remember to turn on Show Hide, showing the paragraph marks and other formatting symbols in the document. Now, several cautions about this document. Note that in your book on page 270, there are words with yellow highlighting. These are simply to point out spelling words that you have learned in this lesson. You are not to reproduce that highlighting in your document. Also remember, this is a rough draft and you're not going to produce it exactly as it appears there. You're going to use correct standard format. Notice that, for example, the table looks like it's double spaced. You are going to single space the table and it will look like the model document, not like the rough draft on page 270. So let's pull up our checklist with the instructions for this document and let's begin. First of all, Press Enter five times. One, two, three, four, five. And we're ready for the first memo heading. These are going to be in bold, so I'm going to press Control B, but you can use the B on the ribbon. And Caps Lock to type Memo 2. Press colon, and then do not space, but press Tab. Then remove Caps Lock. Press Control B again, or the B on the ribbon, to type Terry Hackworth, and it shows that you sure are to insert a comma after that, and then type Property Manager. Now, in my example, this may look like size 14 font to you, but it is 12. I'm just zooming in a little bit so you can see better in the video demonstration. Press Enter two times so that you have a blank line between the headings. We're going to turn on Caps Lock and Bold again to type from. Type the colon and then turn off Caps Lock and Bold. Press Tab twice this time. Notice the first time you can hardly tell that you've done it, but just press again and then you will be lined up directly under the information above it. Here we're applying the proofreader's marks that are there to capitalize the first letter of Recreation and Coordinator. Turn on Bold again and Caps Lock. You're going to tab twice on this line to be lined up under Rosa to type April 14, 2013. The circle around the APR indicates that you are to spell it out. And the final heading, we are told that this is to be in all caps with those three underlines underneath it. Tab once to line up under April and type Fitness Center. At this point, you're going to press Enter two times and begin the first paragraph of the memo. Notice that I have pasted in two paragraphs because there is a proofreader mark of a paragraph symbol before the word as soon as in the rough draft. So we have two paragraphs here. At that point, you're going to press Enter two times and insert the table. This time I'm going to demonstrate using the Insert Table command where you specify the number of columns, which is two, and the number of rows, which is going to be four. Remember, this is the normal look for your table when you first begin it. So type the subject headings. We're using tab to move from cell to cell. There's a correction, so the first number we're typing is 15. Tab and type exercise bicycles. Do not capitalize the B in bicycles. That's what the proofreader's mark is telling you. Capitalize the R in rowing, and we're done with entering the data in the table. Now, once again, we're going to, with the white arrow 
In the left margin, we're going to click to select the first row. We are going to make the column headings bold and centered. Then we're going to right align the number or quantities columns or cells. To right align the numbers in these cells, we're going to click Align Text Right in the Paragraph group on the Home ribbon. All right, now we are ready to auto fit. Click anywhere in the table, then right click and click Auto Fit to Contents. Let me show you an alternative way to do this. On the Table Tools ribbon, choose the Layout tab, and under Auto Fit, we have these same commands that you can find if you right-click. Now our table is looking like it's supposed to, but we have this final step of centering it horizontally. Since we're already on the Table Tools Layout menu, let's go up here on the left to Properties, and under Alignment, choose Center and OK. After the table, press Enter one more time so that we have a blank line under the table. Then type the final two paragraphs. You need to apply the proofreader's marks correctly in these two paragraphs. Be sure that they are single spaced but with a blank line between the two paragraphs. Then after inserting one blank line after the final paragraph, you're going to type your reference initials. Remember, just first and last. And your memo should be finished. Let's zoom out and take a look. This is what your memo should look like. If you have any questions, you can replay the video. Now, be sure to save it and then submit it for scoring in GDP. Correct all your errors there to zero.